Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and to my tutorial series where I give you the tools to get the inspiration to do what you want to do with the game. I don't exactly tell you how to do it, but just give you the tools to do it. That was difficult to explain. Whatever. Um, I'm, I'm here today with uh, such a subject as a blueprints and how to make them fit in The Sims basically, how I figure out how a blueprints work for this game. And I, when I'm playing my own games, I love one floor houses, but I do love building multiple level houses at the same time. So let's keep that in mind. Um, what I do when I start my building process is to go to Google or Pinterest and just search for any random inspirational picture of a house, whatever I feel at the time, is it being cottage or is it being modern house or is it small or big or is it just a townhouse of certain part of the world. The Google is your oyster, you can find anything in there. Just use your imagination to find out what you want and just look through. Oh, is it this or is it that, you know? And now I just went to Pinterest today I'll pop the picture of the blueprint and the house, what it looks like on the website. I'll pop the picture here and I don't actually know what language this is. I have no idea. I'm Finnish person. In school I am being taught Finnish, Swedish, English and I was taught also German. So I never learned the mid-Europe or South Europe languages. I am very sorry. I am very uh, special in that case. But nevertheless, this is the blueprint that I'm going to be using to give you the idea of how I translate the build, uh, the blueprints into the builds in the game. What I want to start with is that I always go with walls down view which means that the walls are not going to be dropping in front of my face when I do a wall. Let's get rid of that. Ctrl Z. And with looking at this blueprint, I can probably drop the picture for all the video here. I don't know. Um, I want to point out that you need to learn how big a double bed is, for example. Uh, also, I need to point out that my mouse is officially now dying. So keep that in mind when I struggle with the mouse here. It's not my regular built way to struggle so much. But a bed, double bed, three times two. Usually we want to have some sort of an end tables. I'm not now looking for any type of color matching or style matching or anything like it. Now. This way they will take four times three. And thus way, looking at the print, we can see that there is only a one end table. I'm gonna pull the wall up now just for you guys. And then we can see that there is no window here, but there might be a three square window here because the window does go a little over the bed end. If you get my drift, I'll just pull up a window here. I don't have move objects on now, so let's just see how we go without it. I'm just gonna, it's a modern window that the build has, but I'm just gonna go with this now. And yet again, with the alt, I can adjust the height the way I want. I'm just gonna drop it here. So it's not straight onto the floor. It's not going into the roof, basically. So there we go. Very nice, like midway decision here and then we see that there is some sort of empty space here and possibly have a walk-in closet here so we can with a shift if we are just with the wall tool we can press shift and make a room we don't always need to change for the room tool to do the same thing but we can actually just always stick with the wall tool just press shift and make a room. I don't know if I ever showed that before. I'm sorry if I didn't. 
And then we see that there is a door coming up. So I'm assuming this could be our bedroom. It is a rather small. We could consider making it one square longer. So the window is middle of the room. And then we can look up that walk-in closet. Just snug it in there. And that's technically what the picture now shows. We just need to add the door. With Sims, you need to kind of just work with what you have on position what you have. So I would put the door in this position. And one of my cats is having a running fit, so you probably hear that. So I am very sorry if you do, but that, that's happening here. Um, you can see on the blueprint that this is actually three squares long, most likely, but the cupboard itself is two squares long, and we can leave one empty square here if you so wish, because next we are going to be looking at the bathroom area. And again, I'm pushing my walls down, I'm taking crate out, and I'm trying to figure out, is it better for us to make it two times three? bathroom because it is possible even if we put a uh what are these combos what are these combos called i do not know what they're called but they actually work if we put the bath uh, to toilet on this side the sim steps into the shower and then to the bathtub from this side as you can see it blocks us from doing it from this side even if we turn the toilet so we need to put the toilet on this seat and then we can shove any lovely sink on this side pulling the walls up with the home button and we can put a probably want to turn the door this way so it's more natural like it opens this way whichever way so it doesn't block the sink you see so there we go working Small, snug, any small apartment, dreamy bathroom, really. Then we are looking at the next room. And if we are making it for any child, for example, I would ignore the wardrobe in this case. We have already one. Sims don't need more. They don't even need one at all. So we could technically just get away with this. Three times five. It's quite incredible, right? We just need to get them a bed. Whatever bed we... Do we have a toddler or do we have a child? I, I'm guessing a toddler. Uh, issue with toddler beds is that they will need a space. I don't remember which side it was, but I like to try and put, put it off from the wall so that the parents can read them to sleep. I never remember which side it is that they need, but it is one or the other. And then I'm going to put just any old nightstand again, I guess. Then we are going to figure out we need to get a little... This is probably the one of the sad parts about small bathroom. That you can't put a potty in the bathroom. We could instead, in this case, consider to adjust this, just for the sims that we have, get rid of the wall. It didn't do anything for the bedroom, but we didn't have the space in the bedroom in the first place. But now we have actually a potty spot, if we so wish. Yeah? Or... We can put the toilet seat in there and put a potty spot here instead. We can even move it a little closer to the sink. So there's more space in front of the sink. Uh, sink. The bathtub. If your sim likes to give toddlers a bath. So then it actually definitely works. They have the space here. I do know that even if the, bath uh, bath uh, the toilet would be here, the bathtub still works. But... If you're a little paranoid about it, it's fine. 
So here's the first change I would do for this build in case I have toddlers in my household. I would use this square that was left over from this wardrobe. Like so. Uh, what else does toddlers need? I do not know what toddlers need. I never really care for them much. So I'm just gonna... Where was the window? So window is gonna be here. We can put the that there and with an E button we can copy this. We can try to snug it about the same height. I'm not gonna be so touchy-feely about it today. But here we have technically already two rooms filled up in a way that it's necessary for two bedrooms. Then we are gonna be looking at the kitchen living area and we have done this area differently. We could cut it off like so, like it is on the blueprint technically. But I don't think it's necessary. I don't see it being beneficial for us in any way. I think it's just going to be more troublesome for any sim family that lives here. If it is going to be three or more sims in the same house. Because you can fit two, two uh, toddlers here, but it might get a little, little uh, tight with two kids. Um, I can make it work, though. I'm pretty sure we can if we choose any two beds because single beds need one square times three which means two kids are welcome into this house as well you can even fit a toddler bed there now if you so wish you can snuck this here and we can move a toddler bed here or even this way no room for toys much but it's a possibility you can do this it's doable there we go. And then with the living room kitchen. You can see on the blueprint that they have that little bit of a like a stepping area here for entrance. So I'm thinking if we just snug up like so, do this, then we have like a Double door opportunity here. Let's just do any two two square door. What is a two? That is a two square door. There we go. And then we need another window, which we can use this one. It's not a problem. We can just shove it up in there. It's gonna be in the corner. That's fine. And to make it more cute, I could consider pulling up another window into this corner. Gives a little bit more character to the house, I think. And then I would just pull it up all the way here. I'm looking at the space. Okay, okay. And then I would definitely close it up in here. Then we could consider putting a little bit of a porch here at the back, like it shows on the picture. Um, now becomes the issue of looking at it from outside. Quite a stunning thing, isn't it? Um, one also thing is that the blue print shows windows on this side, which is perfectly fine. You can you can use that. Uh, we can put that window there. We could even color it up to a little bit more white so that it goes on the area that the sink is supposed to be on. So we, we can keep that eye on there. But now we are looking at it like this and we are like, oh, what happened here? What, what, why is it so weird? Why is it so not what I expected it to be? Well, start with, I will probably click on the build here and sit just one pull, just so it gets teeny tiny foundation. I will change the foundation. This is my all time favorite. I would put it into this. And yet again, remember, one room at a time, you can change the foundation. And remember that this is also considered a room. So don't forget to go around your house and do the rooms that are with the closets as well. So now we have a very simple white, white foundation all around the house. There we go. 
it already looks a little bit different. It gives a little bit more character to it. And if it's only one click, you don't need stairs. If it's two clicks up, if it's a two, two times up, like so, then you will need stairs for the house. One time up, probably the best uh, possibility you can do for any starter house, because you don't need the stairs. Stairs always give a little bit more character, they are a little bit more cuter, but you know, just move on, because things happen. And then, looking at this, it, it, it looks like it has a half wall on top here. So I'm going to shift click again and build a room with the half wall. And I chose the smallest, shortest half wall because it doesn't look at the picture that tall. And then we are going to go to the half wall trims and we have a, a ton of options here. These are base game, which are all a little bit thicker, thinner options. They have a little bit of a little differences between them. This is all my time favorite, just the thinnest white is always my go-to. We also have glass and some fence type of thing. And this is a get famous, a black glass half wall trim. But this is my favorite and this is what I always basically go with. So now looking at it again, we can put the grid on this time because we are looking at the roof and I can see that there is a gabled roof here and we are gonna with the dot and half punctuation i think the words are um you can turn the roof and then you are pulling it from these these uh, arrows to the right spot and now we are looking at it like oh my god why is it so tall <laughs> no panic let's just pull it down we can make it uh, as low as we want. I would say that we want a little bit height to it. We can't ever copy exactly what we have in our blueprints because of Sims limitations. So you have to give yourself a little bit of wee way on that. And just forgive yourself that you can't do exact copy of such a thing. Okay, remember that? Then we can see that there is multiple other winky wonky things here. This either pulls your eaves out or it pulls them in. And with a shift, you can pull just one time uh, side at a time. So this, th this side is super long. For example, this could be just completely in. This gives you some opportunities with some terrace and porch builds. Keep that in mind. And also, this side shows better. You need to a little bit circle around the roof to actually see where every single chicka -ma chick is. And then we are just gonna pull this in as well because it was going inside our half wall room here, like that, and we don't need it. So we are just gonna do so. And then we are just gonna cover the whole roof, like so. How exciting! However, I can still see from the picture that it has little differences here. So I would say that we take the half cabled roof, we pull it up in here, we pull it down completely as down as we can get, we are pulling all these eaves in in every single direction, totally, completely, and then we are going to be pulling it all the way here, and then I would also shorten it by so, so it gives a little bit of a like a cover for the front porch here. Now I realize I made the back porch. Oh shoot. Okay, well no problem. I can copy this. It's not a problem. It's the same uh, length, wide width as the front porch. Now I just need to make it long enough to cover up the back porch. So, there we go, now we have roofs. Yay, awesome. But it doesn't look great, does it? I think it doesn't look finished. So, we're gonna go here in the roof trims. We have a massive collection of different kind of uh, eaves here and they all do a little bit of a different 
different job and different kind of uh, eaves. Uh, my favorite, all time favorite, is this just regular white uh, square roof trim. Uh, someone, some people are using the bejeweled a lot. It gives more character for the build. It is definitely a massive difference. And I can see that I could just do possibly this for the build. I could have like a, like a separate looking roofing here because of the bejeweled. Or I could trim it down, pull it back in, and then it would do this. So you need to, again, keep a little bit in mind what you are building, where you are building, and again, just go around the house and see every single corner because nothing drives those people crazy who download your stuff from the gallery when they see you haven't actually paid attention, okay? So always pay attention to whatever you build, whatever corner it is in your build. And here I can see, here's a really annoying thing, but there's very little I can do about this. Because if I pull it here, I'm going inside the half room. In some cases, I would ignore this. I would leave it like so. Would mean that I need to use higher half wall. And if I just take this, I can place it automatically with this height. I don't need to draw the room again. Someone finds this easier. I usually just draw the room again. It gives a little bit more um, coverage for the roofing there. It shows the trimming at the front of the house though, at the half wall, which on the picture it doesn't show. Oh, sorry, what happened there? Um, no excuse for that. Um, but yeah, it shows the trim here. I, I could probably color it into some other darker color here so you can see, yeah, there we go. But on the picture, when you're looking at that, and if you're trying to give a proper copy of the house, then this is not how you're going to do it. We're just going to, you know, if you want the taller half wall, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If this bothers you so much, you can pull this whole room one square bigger. Yet again, you will end up with this problem. So I would just ignore this, or maybe, just maybe, if we had move objects on, I'm pretty sure we could place this. Oh, we can actually place it really close without move objects as well, as long as we hold on the alt key. So we can cover it up. It's no problem. It's hidden now. We have a, we have a, uh, what is this called? Chimney. Uh, what are these? Yeah, chimney. <laughs> chimney in there and it gives a little bit of a character to it sure however it's not modern which the build is trying to be but we can ignore that and now we need some columns we need to add some columns and these are my favorite columns they're simple white columns they they just they just are perfect in any way and we can just shove them up in here. If you do this on the this foundation, however, you can see that it drops a little bit outside of the uh, the foundation. And if it bothers you, you need to change it into something other, any other foundation really, so that it doesn't um, bother you so much. But for me, I've gotten used to it. It doesn't bother me, so we are going to move on. It doesn't show that it has fins at the front, so we are going to ignore that. Then we can, with the G, take the grid on again, and we can look at the size of a uh, one square landscaping tool. We can put it on the hardest. And I think we are just going to choose any old cobblestone or whatever. And looking at it, we can just do a path like so to the front or you can choose any rock from the four tiles and put it in there then you have got two options you can draw it yourself or just be lazy and 
pay something for the rocks that you are gonna be putting on the floor. Either free landscaping, coloring or the floor tiles. I never know exactly myself what I'm going to do with the front porch like these areas. What, what do you uh, bathe them with? Um, I'm just gonna put some concrete there right now. I have no excuse. Then we're looking at the picture. Okay, so we have kind of like a tile or maybe rock. Rock um, front there. Maybe like this, maybe even. I don't know, I like this better. I might do this. Um, you can see on the picture that the rock doesn't go all the way here. However, in The Sims we need to do some adjustments and just go with what we know will work. And we can't do those little nukes or crannies. You know, that little extra corner. We can't do those, so we just have to go with this. And other than that, the house seems to be white, so we just can choose any old white paint here. Uh, with the alt you can paint one room wall at a time. Let me show here. Here's a, for example, this porch is counted as a room, so it paints one room and one room. One room, which was the kids' room wall here. The bathroom, the cupboard, and here, because the bedroom, the master bedroom, is one room all the way from here. I'm just gonna bathe it manually, dragging the paint over here so I don't lose that rock here. What I would say would be fun little extra is to paint the roofs with this rock as well. It would give it a little bit more something to it. It's not completely white. It's not as boring as it could be. So we're just gonna do that. And it, it looks fairly well. Okay. Uh, what we could do is to consider changing the roof pattern. And we have a huge collection here as well. And always try to stay a little bit true to what the build is saying. And when it comes to sims, these colors are not exactly what they show they would be. Like for example, this blue, it's a light gray. So what it looks like, it's either white or light gray. This is not white, it's brown. This is kind of a light gray beige thing. I kind of like this better, so I'm gonna put that down. And it looks fine. Now all we would need is to do some landscaping. And kind of, you know, get rid of all that garbage furniture that we made as a measurement example in the start. We can go through the furnishing on the next episode. I think that would be pretty fun and the landscaping and stuff. So, but here we have what we could come up with from a blueprint that looked like so. And I think it's actually pretty cute. You have to admit that it's not actually half as bad from that angle anyway. And to remind the bl uh, blue, uh, the floor plan actually looks like so. When we have finished with it, now we just need to actually furnish it properly and landscape it. And I think we will do that in the next episode. So thank you for joining me again today. And I hope I lightened up a little bit of the uh, blueprinting idea. Always remember what the furniture size is, what it requires to work. And that is again something we go more through on the next episode. So join me in there. And bye-bye.